Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. This morning's service is pre-recorded, and we are so glad that you are joining us. You can find a bulletin and ways to make an offering at www.elcvienna.org. We are gathered for worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. You can find the bulletin and ways to give at elcvienna.org. Thank you so much for your generosity and we're so glad to have you here this morning. Wah, ha, 
have like to dread, what have I to do? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have left the peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim's way. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting healing. In this time of pandemic and racial tensions, let us pray, taking a moment in silence for reflection. From a worldwide pandemic of the coronavirus disease, from fevers and difficulty breathing, from sickness and dying, from fear and worry, from stress and weariness, from isolation and loneliness, from uncertainty and loss. Heal us, O Lord. From the sin of racism and injustice, from white supremacy and racist rhetoric, from personal and structural racism, from white privilege and race bias, from police brutality and political provocateurs, from violence and riots, from destruction and death. Heal us, O Lord. We are all ages and all colors, all genders and all creeds. We are all your children. 
for our families and friends, all communities and all nations, for all our neighbors, we pray, heal us, O Lord. Almighty God, we believe in your healing and forgiveness. We believe in your love and new life. And so in faith and hope, in Jesus' name we pray, heal us, O Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we pray. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. 
We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 15, verses 15 through 21. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insults. Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. 
It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm comes from Psalm 26, verses 1 through 8. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Word of God word of life. Thanks be to God. Now it is time for our children's message. So I invite our children to come forward, get close to the screen so you can see well. This morning, we have someone very special coming to join us to share the children's message with you. It's Mrs. Kathy Uffelman. She is our faith formation director, and she's put some things together, some bags for you to pick up um, for our Sunday school for this year, and um, she has a blessing to share with you as well. So we welcome this morning to our children's message, Mrs. Kathy Uffelman. Hi friends, first of all, I really miss seeing you, but I'm so glad that we have Zoom, our computers, FaceTime, and telephones, and all of the technology that keeps us connected. I'm gonna now say a blessing for those devices. When you pick up your bags, when you come through the church and pick up your bags, in it will be a mouse pad, and that also has a blessing on it that you can put next to your device and use. So here's the blessing of the devices. God, you call us to share your good news of love, justice, and peace with a world in need. You have gifted us with rich resources from scripture, tradition, reason, and experience which have allowed people to develop new ways of listening to the voices of many others, attending to their interests and concerns, connecting with diverse peoples and groups, and engaging them as a people of faith. 
We ask your blessing on our digitally integrated ministries and on the many devices we use to love and serve our neighbors in a changing world. May they never become distractions from relationships or idols in our hands. May we always remember that your son, Jesus Christ, is the one true mediator of your love and grace in the wired world. Amen. good news of Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of St. Matthew in the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are a stumbling block to me. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Very truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What is it to be a follower of Jesus Christ? What is it to be a follower of Jesus Christ? In our gospel today, and what may very well be the heart of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus invites us to be his followers. What does that mean? Jesus has just told the disciples that he is going to suffer, die, and rise again. It is an executive summary of the Gospel. Peter in response, tries to cast out that whole notion. The gospel uses the word rebuke, which is the same word that is used to describe what Jesus does to demons. It is a harsh exchange, as if Peter is trying to exorcise Jesus. Peter is not holding back. This is the same Peter, mind you, that just called Jesus the Messiah, the son of the living Lord. Peter is Jesus' number one fan. In return, Jesus calls Peter Satan. Maybe he does this because Jesus is experiencing temptation to be other than who Jesus is, to do other than what Jesus would do. 
But Jesus is having none of that. Jesus tells Peter, commands Peter to get behind him. Then, after that fun little disciple drama, Jesus says to all the disciples, if you, if any, want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. Jesus speaks these words to the disciples, inviting them to follow him. He is not inviting them to be his disciples. They already are. He's inviting them to be his followers. He's inviting them to become something else, something more. Sure, discipleship is a part of it. But what if? What if discipleship is only what gets you close to the beginning? I wonder, I wonder if discipleship is not the beginning, but gets you near the beginning. The disciples have been with Jesus for most of three years. Chapter wise, the gospel of Matthew is well past half over. They've just begun to see Jesus as the Messiah, the son of God. They are the disciples, for goodness sake, but they have not yet gotten to the starting point here, 16 chapters in. If you don't have the whole Jesus thing figured out, you are in good company with the disciples at this point, and I am with you. Up to now, I never noticed that following Jesus is more than mere discipleship. Discipleship is about learning, learning to see, learning to do, learning to be. Following is about becoming. It is being, being a follower of Jesus. Discipleship isn't even the beginning of following. It is two steps behind following. There are two steps yet to go and each step harder than the next. The next step, as Jesus said, is to deny yourself. It would be an understatement to say that this is hard to do. We are awfully good at putting ourselves right in the middle of everything. The whole of life for each of us pretty much happens through the lens of self. Jesus realizes this. He has self too. Jesus realizes that we must deal with ourselves. And to that end, he calls us to deny ourselves. I think what this means is not that we are to obliterate ourselves, but just deny ourselves, set ourselves aside, make room for something else, even put something else first in our lives. I think this is what the first commandment is all about. God is God. God is first. God is God, and we are not. God. Maybe this is very disappointing news. Maybe this is overwhelmingly frightening. Maybe this is a huge relief. Thank God that God is God. And I am not. If I were God, there would be a lot more ice cream. There would. I do believe that many of the world's issues could be solved by more ice cream. But I know that would just be a gateway to many a slippery slope. See the problem? What if instead one got up in the morning and the first thing that came to mind was the thought that it's not all about me. There is more. 
There is something greater. There is something else infinitely more at stake. There is God first and foremost. How could that not change everything? Deny yourself. Make room for God. That is the first step from discipleship to being a follower of Jesus. The second step after denying ourselves and putting God before ourselves is about everyone else. That is taking up the cross, living out our lives for others. That is what the cross was for, for Jesus. He didn't do it for his sake. Jesus gave his life to us and for us on the cross. Jesus put God and all of us before himself. And that is how he can ask us to get behind him and follow him. What Jesus commanded Peter to do, what he invited the disciples to do, what he calls us to still today, to deny ourselves, to take up the cross, to put God and others before ourselves, that brings us to the beginning of getting behind him, coming after him, the beginning of following him. There, the self-centered life comes to an end. There we find new life. There, following him, life with God and all of humanity follows. There, the disciple becomes the follower. I becomes we, and we are so much more. There is the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. There is here. In him. In Jesus. Calling us now to follow. Amen. Thank you.
we proclaim our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding, that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing. And heal the sick, especially the Tufectus family, the Kroll family, the Helmstetter family, Don, Dennis, Clara, Sarah, Cindy, Sally and Ruck, Marv, Brad, Margaret, Mahita, Joan, Clara, Nani, Ardella, Jean, Ina, Daryl, Paul, Ned, Laura, Tim and Rick, Danielle and Gerard, Joyce, Karen, Clara, Paula, Barb, Mia, Lily, Claudia, Mike, Dave, Lisa, Michael, Marion, Clark, Malcolm, Ralph, Bill, Maddie, Carl, Larry, Samantha, and Helen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light, especially Frida, Kim, and Harold. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Can you ever 
God in Christ. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And also with you. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A few announcements for you. There will be drive through communion today from 1030 to 1230. Also, we will have resource bag pickup today for our confirmation students and elementary faith formation students right after worship from 10.30 to 12.30. Just drive through for communion, keep on going, and they will be there set up for you. Our middle and high school youth will have a parking lot party, part two, tonight. <laughs> Contact Christian Marbach, our youth director, for more information. We would like to have a few more people help us out with recordings of reading stories to our little ones and teaching lessons to our elementary faith formation students for this fall. If you'd be interested in that, please contact Kathy Uffelman or Christian Marbach for more information. Finally, if you have been using Vanco for your electronic giving, also known as Simply Giving through the Thrivent organization, Please know that we will stop using these electronic offering services here at Emmanuel. Instead, we have begun using the Tithely platform online and its app for your devices. We ask all who give through Vanco or Simply Giving to switch over to Tithely by tomorrow, August 31st, if you would please. You can find out more information on how to do so on our website under the Giving tab. Thank you.
We have the Gamble family with us here this morning, Chip and Anna and their children, Trace and Chrissy. They've been working on a program through the Scouts called the God and Me program, which entails uh, a number of different things at different levels. But what they were working on and learning more recently was um, about creation, being created in God's image, about God speaking to us, calling to us. They worked with the Samuel story a bit with uh, learning about prayer and also about loving, caring for, and serving others. It was a very um, good uh, series of of classes that they took through this and they talked about it with me afterwards. We did a little um, conversation on Zoom, didn't we? And I even learned some things from you all about this. So I'm very impressed with this program. And what I'd like to do now is um, give them their certificates and their pins. There we go. And I think we'll ask their mom and dad to help them out. Here is Chrissy's. If you want to pin that on her. And here is Trace. Okay. Very good. These pins have a multicolored symbol of the cross that are attached to a little badge. And at the top of that, on the badge, it says God and me. Looks very sharp on your scout uniforms. All right. (laughs) Let us pray a prayer of blessing for the Gamble family and their children, Trace and Chrissy. May the Lord be with you. We pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for loving parents and for learning children. Thank you for this God and Me program, for the instruction that Chrissy and Trace have received, the things they have learned about being created in your image, about serving others, about being able to lift up to you all things in prayer. God, continue to speak to them and to call them as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ that they might live in the grace, love, and forgiveness that you give to them and all of us. May they continue as a family to live, learn, and grow together in your ways. God bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Gamble family. Congratulations, Trace and Chrissy. You did a superb job. God bless you. Thank you. (laughs) Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. And set our hearts ablaze with hope. A wildfire in our very soul. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. Thank you.
peace. Share the good news. We will. Thanks be to God.